Hi guys, it's Kara. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about yo-yo dieting, stress eating, and my history with food. So basically, I prior to 2019, 2020, I had no idea that I was a stress eater, an emotional eater, um, that I ate my feelings, that I bored ate. I just was eating bad food. I wasn't tracking my calories. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to my food, although I do have a degree in astrophysics. If you were to told me what a calorie was in terms of food, couldn't tell you. I could tell you the physical definition of how it has to do with work, force, and physics, but if you were to tell me like how to estimate the calories in a Big Mac, couldn't tell you. It's amazing, isn't it? Just so ignorant, if that's the word. And it's not just me. My whole family has a history with food. Um, with confusion about food, calories, counts as calories, stuff like that. So it wasn't until about... 2020 that well my, I've always been big I've always struggled with my weight just didn't know why I didn't like exercise I was that kid in softball when I was little who played in the grass in the outfield instead of actually playing the game yeah <laughs> I did that um so I was always bigger but so was my whole family except the cousin who was miraculous miraculously could eat anything he wanted and was 80 pounds soaking wet maybe he's 100 now I don't know he's very very skinny still um little jealous yes um so around 2020 well 2020 um I decided I was gonna get healthy I was gonna be cute in overalls that was my goal I wanted to look cute in overalls so I started doing the whole calorie restriction thing well mm, let me back up a little bit so around September of 2019 I decided that I was gonna start learning about food stuff like that and my sister who had weighed 265 at her max I think somewhere around there her story varies when you ask her um she lost weight by eating a lot of subway she worked there and she lost she's like half the person she used to be and she had kept it off for quite a long time and so I asked her about food just like I don't know anything about food so she told me to eat two to three hundred maybe four hundred calories several times a day to never let your body be hungry to always use it as fuel you couldn't think of it as entertainment anymore you couldn't think of it as oh I'm gonna have fun with my friends by going out to dinner anymore you just had to look at food as fuel and I was eating I started that I was eating almonds apples stuff like that the classic healthy food um, two to three hundred calories several times a day and I was always hungry I don't know why like I just I was always hungry it wasn't I hated what I was eating um, I did find some good things like these banana oatmeal pancake things that I would make those were delicious I still eat those um, and I lost a little bit of weight but then I just gave up I just I gave up and so uh, by probably November and then in 2020 my new year's resolution was to fit into overalls <laughs> look cute in them so I started calorie counting writing stuff down to help um and I also had a weight loss buddy buddy her name um that I was in school with and her name was Lauren she also wanted she wanted to lose 20 to 25 pounds so we would calorie restrict do really good on the weekends or sorry pretty good throughout the week 
for a couple of weeks and then we'd reconvene on a Monday and we would talk about how we basically binge ate. Um, and I did that for a, about a month and a half, almost two months, and I had only lost 14 pounds, which is not nothing. It was more than I had ever lost before, but that was cool. Um, but I didn't want to binge. I didn't want to feel bad about eating Eastside Mario's. I didn't want to ba be feel bad about eating a burrito. I didn't want to feel bad about eating mayonnaise because I love M Miracle Whip. It's amazing on eggs. I love it. So what I started, I had heard about intermittent fasting a few months back about this, um, this chick at um, Indigenous Services at school. Um, she said she intermittent fast. She ate four hours a day and fasted for 20. And I was like, that's insane. That's literally insane. That was my thought and just blew it off. And then on February 24th of 2020, um, I found Rachel Sharp and she made it seem very easy. And she, her videos convinced me and much with a lot of research, spent the entire night researching that alternate day fasting was for me. So February 25th, I started and from January to March 20th, when, you know, when the world shut down because of the pandemic, um, I lost 43 pounds. Keep in mind that I only lost 14 pounds from January to February 25th. So I lost a significant amount of weight doing alternate day fasting. And it was, it was fantastic. Like, um, I had the discipline. I started drinking water again. I hate water. We can talk about more of that in another video. It's flavorless, colorless, nastiness. It's, I don't like water. I like, I like juice. I like juice. So, um, and then the world stopped. I wasn't able to go to class. I wasn't able to do research as I was. I wasn't able to do my routine. And then since I started hanging out more with a friend that I would play Pokemon Go with, we kind of quarantined together during lockdowns and stuff. And he made me realize like some of the stuff you do isn't normal it's just not normal and it <laughs> turned out in the process uh, through um talking to him and through um telephone appointments etc i had a form of ocd and with all of my routines being thrown out i turned to food because i had no idea what to do I get very flustered, very stressed without a plan, without schedules, um, stuff like that. So um, I was eating a lot more. It was like um, the effort mentality of I didn't eat. I was supposed to fast today, but I didn't. I just had a bunch of takeout. I'll do better tomorrow because I. One of the girls I was in a Facebook group said. Um, just if you if you mess up just continue on with plan and I wanted eat fast eat fast in my book so I would just eat normally the next day my new normal which was homemade food healthier stuff um, but then and I would go for walks I was walking a lot at this time I would be up by like 6 a.m. and walk 14 kilometers I had my little routes I had three or four different walking routes that I would do around the city I was living in at the time. And the, one of the longest ones was about 14 kilometers. And I do that in about like th two and a half, three hours. So I was burning a lot of calories, but I was also eating a lot of calories. And I also during quarantine, like you can only watch so much YouTube. You can only watch so much content and you would just get bored. Um, so I would eat and watch TV like most people did during quarantine um, which was not good um, so I was bored eating I was 
I didn't realize I was stress eating at the time, not until I basically snapped a few times. Um, and we'll get into that. Um, but I didn't realize I was doing this until I started, <sighs> I realized like that I knew I was messing up with food. I didn't, and I knew that it was bad for me. Like no one can eat takeout two, three times a week, let alone in a day and it'd be healthy. And I was just, I was gaining a lot of weight quickly, which sucked because you can't out, out exercise a bad diet. You can't out cardio a bad diet. Um, and plus I no longer had Lauren. She, she had moved back to her city that she was from. We didn't really have contact. We were, we were exercise buddies. She would, uh, I would walk to the gym on campus and she would walk as well and she'd go and do the gym and I'd swim in and then I'd walk home and we talk about it and stuff like that as well as do research and stuff. We were, we were friends and it was just stressful because I'm very much introverted and I very much have only a few friends and it was rough not having her around. We did everything together at that point. Um, and it wasn't until I was walking along a trail one day and I was listening to music as usual, just ex just going out for a walk, my usual route, one of them. And this, she must have been 10, 12, maybe not even that. Kids look, kids ages, they look young, so I don't know. But she was with her, with her mom, and I was flipping through music at the time so I could kind of hear what they were saying. She was complaining about learning how to run. Her mom who was very skinny, very, very skinny, was running and she was telling her kid that the reason why she has to learn how to run is so she doesn't end up looking like me. Well, she didn't say looking like Kara. She's like, so you don't end up like that lady over there. And I was the only one on the trail. So I knew and something it almost snapped in my head. I had never felt this feeling before where it was, I immediately turned around, walked home, ordered a pizza, and I had never ordered more than a small pizza to consume by myself. And I had never more ate more than half of that small pizza by myself, but I ordered a large pizza and I ate all but two slices and I was so ill I just laid on my couch until I didn't feel ill anymore and I was like I can't I have to get this pizza out of my apartment so once I was able to walk again without feeling like I was going to vomit I went to take it down to the garbage room and as I was walking down the hallway towards the garbage room well actually towards the elevator to get to the garbage room these two guys who I'd never seen in my apartment before, as I walked by, one of them mooed at me. They, he literally mooed, which was so rude. Like I waited, I turned into the laundry room and waited until they, a substantial amount of time until I knew they had gone. And I turned around and went back to my apartment, my unit, and ate those two slices of the pizza. I also, ate a whole bag of Doritos that were in my apartment and chocolate chips and I was still I was not feeling well but I felt that I needed ice cream I needed ice cream so I walked to the variety store don't even know why I wasn't feeling well I need this damn ice cream went and got two drumsticks came back and ate them all and I just I didn't know and from then on I was just whenever my sister and I would get into an argument. I was feeling bored. I was feeling sad. I was feeling depressed. I would eat a bunch of calories, just a bunch of calories. Like for, like it lasted for two to three weeks. And then I got back on track, started losing again, you know, walking, eating homemade food, um, counting calories again, actually writing down what I was eating because I wasn't embarrassed about what I was eating. 
And um, then I, prior to 2020, I had never not worn jeans. All I would wear was jeans. I was comfortable in jeans. And um, Lauren is like, you need, if you want to start working out, you need a cute workout outfit. So I'd never worn leggings before except like when I was a little in the 90s and my mom would dress me up to go to school and stuff like that. But as an adult, as a teenager, I would never wear leggings. I, I was too fat to wear leggings. Still too fat to wear leggings, to be honest. Um, but so I went, the only place I knew where to get leggings was Lululemon and I'm not going to Lululemon, no, or Fatletics. So I bought some Fabletics and I was wearing them. I would, cause I was also wearing out my jeans with um, Chub Rub. We all know what that is. We don't have to explain it. Um, wore out two pairs of jeans walking that way from that. So I also, I was like, it's a good idea. So I ordered some outfits from Fabletics and I was out walking, um, the middle of the day, like two, three weeks after this whole pizza incident. Um, and I was, I was waiting at a crosswalk to go home cause I lived in downtown, like the downtown area, what was, is called Richmond Row, lived a couple blocks of that. I'm a downtown dweller. And this lady had the audacity to come over from the bus stop as I was waiting and she told me that my outfit, which was leggings and an oversized sweatshirt, my body was not conducive and it wasn't flattering to my body. I had never seen this lady before in my entire life. And she just had the nerve to say that. It was, again, something in my brain just snapped. And I walked past the turn that was turning into my to my street, walked to my favorite burrito place, got a large burrito, a quesadilla. While those were, I was waiting for my order to be ready. I went to the Starbucks, got a large frappuccino, which is loaded with calories. And then also went to the variety store and got chips and dip. Went back, picked up my Mexican food, went back, to my apartment and ate it all one sitting and was feeling ill and after that anytime I was stressed I would eat I, I had never experienced it before like I needed food to calm me down what what I liked was vanilla coke with smart food white cheddar popcorn that was my jam i loved it so much i love vanilla coke um and since then i've been struggling um i'd be able to fast a day or two here um maybe a week and then i'd fall off and then especially with the stress of school with research for my thesis um and plus just the added stress of life. <laughs> I, st I went from, I started at 298 and I was at what? I was at 255. I was so close to my first goal at two, 250. And over a year, year and a half, I gained all of it back plus 26 pounds um so I had stopped posting accountability shots on Instagram I wanted to start a YouTube channel back then about fasting because I was very passionate about it. I loved it I loved it um it felt good to have an empty stomach it I was proud about how much water I was drinking because I I would I wouldn't drink water prior but I just, I didn't, I was too afraid to start a YouTube channel because I, I was failing. I wasn't doing what I set out to do. Um, and 
uh, along the way, I was talking to a therapist. It was about other issues, but we talked about food a lot and that's how I discovered that I was eat emotional eating. I was eating my feelings. Um, I knew I discovered the board, boredom eating with quarantine like we all did, right? Uh, that's why they call it the quarantine 20, right? Um, and so now I'm just trying to struggle with that. I was trying to deal with that. Um, the past couple weeks has been stressful. Um, I have been limiting my takeout though, which is good. I haven't, um, I'm not sure if I lost any weight since the last time I talked to y'all. Uh, because, um, A, Thanksgiving was two days ago for us Canadians. It's in early, uh, October. And, um, I haven't been fasting, but I've been trying to limit my takeout, stuff like that. I'm limited to one sweet a day because I do have a sweet tooth and unfortunately I have a salty tooth too, which is never good. Um, been trying to limit my trying to stop drinking my calories again I was out of the habit of drinking my calories and I got back into the habit of drinking my calories and I'm trying to get myself out of that habit again um so baby steps for now um I do plan on fasting tomorrow hopefully it'll go well I plan on going for a swim tomorrow as well I did do my 12,500 steps yesterday and I'm currently at about 4,800. Do plan on going for a walk. It's a little chilly out, so I do have a sweater, but I will be wearing my Fabletics pants because it's getting dark out. And who cares, right? We need to learn to love our bodies. We may want to change them, but we also have to learn to love ourselves, which is also um, on the list of things for me to do for this channel to help me do. Um, so. That being said, that's all I really want to talk about today. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.